Hey everybody, Boris Lasser with BK Forex. Welcome to the Weekly Technicals for the Commodity Dollars. For Aussie Dollar, Dollar Cat, and Kiwi Dollar, October 26th to November 2nd, 2018. And the story in the Calm Dollar land was really the increase in volatility, a pretty sharp increase at that both range up and down, with the end of the week essentially showing a little bit of a rebound in risk as we closed out the week. The big story actually happened on Friday, today, uh, with the Yuan hitting 10-year lows almost, almost within uh, five pips of hitting the seven mark. Um, that's obviously a big issue for Asia because the weaker yuan really starts to weigh on Australia as far as trading flows go and risk-off flows go, um, and uh, same way for New Zealand. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, we see further destabilization in the region, which is going to then obviously wash over the two calm dollar currencies. And Aussie, of course, now probing that very, very key 70 level, which is a huge, huge multi-month support. Kiwi held the lows from a couple of weeks ago, uh, and Caddy, of course, playing its own too. And let's take a look at the levels and see where they're, they're setting up. So Aussie really came super close to 70 before we bounce back up, um, and that becomes still the Maginot line as the week opens up. Uh, Dollar Cat, what's interesting here is relatively hawkish BOC, uh, oil falling down, market. Interesting enough that Cat is kind of getting swept into the whole Calm Dollar group in some ways. It was trading very much on its own idiosyncratic path for a long time, but now the, uh, the concerns about the trade war and the global sort of worries of Asia slowing, specifically China slowing down and therefore having a kind of a deep impact on all the Calm Dollar currencies from a demand point of view, is certainly taking its toll on the caddy as well. Although the 32 seems to be a very, very key resistance bounce off. And, and I'll show you on the charts. My view is that I think you can trade against that. And then Kiwi doing its own thing, but uh, definitely holding at a higher low for the time being um, as we start the week. On a calendar, not much. I mean, there's a lot of Australian data that's sort of second tier. Let's take a look at what, uh, what's going on in the calm down land. So I think we have, we have Aussie inflation data on Tuesday. Kathy's actually bullish that, so it could be marginally better. That could provide a little bit of support uh, for the Aussie. The Chinese data midweek is going to be interesting, not necessarily because, you know, it's going to have much of an impact on FX, but it will give us a clue as to just how bad things are in China, especially the manufacturing PMI. If that dips below the 50 boom bus level, I mean, that's a, it's close, and it's more psychological than anything else, but just the fact that it dips into contractionary territory could cast a pall over all the calm dollars as a result of it. And so if it holds, I think um, that could provide a little bit of a, of a support. If it dips, it could be a much more serious sell-off in the calm dollar land on, on the funded basis. And then, of course, end of the week, you know, we're coming into the GDP data um, out of Canada. And then finally, the final uh, two days, we have retail sales out of Australia and PPI. Uh, not much um, uh, impact there. Kathy uh, is going to update. She doesn't have a view on it just yet. Uh, and then finally, finally, uh, we have the employment data in Canada, which is, of course, the other big marquee event this week. And here, we're bearish Canada because there's a big, sharp drop in employment component of uh, September IV PMI. And frankly, employment in Canada has been sort of overperforming, so it may be a little bit of a reversion to the mean. So we'll see how that, uh, that trades out. For the time being, though, when you're looking at the charts, what's pretty clear, and we'll start with the, uh, we'll start with the Aussie. So Aussie looks sort of bullish on the charts. I mean, this is a big, big comeback, but um, it doesn't necessarily sometimes translate into a large continuation flow in Aussie. Aussie is a kind of a very limited low volatility trade. Is there, you know, is there maybe 30, 40 pips on the trade if we have a relatively decent um, risk opening on Monday, Tuesday? Yeah, I mean, we could probably uh, run towards 71, 71, 20, depending on whether Nikkei picks up the um, uh, picks up the ball from from US and whether there isn't any kind of other turbulence over the weekend so yeah I, you know there's there's a possibility I'm just sort of very leery of truly going full-on bullish on this trade even though technically it does look okay because we definitely balanced it this is a very key magnetic level and I doubt that the first pass through it is just simply gonna it's gonna make a v-shaped recovery I have a feeling they're gonna try and take it back down and really my preferred trade here, if I'm going to be trading this sort of on a positional basis, is to try to short 
against the 72 level. Try to short maybe through the moving edge, somewhere around 7150, 7125, because I think we see a pretty serious stall here. You'd have to really, really have a lot of things go right globally over the next week and a half to truly um, get a burst up through the 72s um, higher. So I'm a little bit uh, dubious of trading it, but I, I really don't have a strong view one way or the other um, as far as the condos go. Kiwi holding bid better here, lower volatility trade also obviously, uh, did come back after the Chinese worry. But again, as I said, China, China could come back and become a, a fresh worry next week. So here, um, we have to you know, watch the lows as well. Um, I would say I would feel a lot better trading calm dollars after the Chinese data clears than before, just because I think the risk, the headline risk here could be pretty significant to the downside, especially if there's, a, if there's a sharp, sharp surprise to the downside. Now, caddy is a, is a different story. It's a little more idiosyncratic. Let me just get rid of this, sorry. Um, oops. Bear with me just one second. Um, what you see clearly in the charts here is that they, they, we really failed ahead of the 32s. It's a lower high. It's a pretty bullish construct for Caddy, more or less, or sort of a mildly bullish construct, I guess. You can take the short here with a 32 stop or a 32.25 stop, 32.50 stop, really. Um, so that's about 150 points from here. And see if you could positionally move it towards the uh, 30 hundred just on better risk flows as, as the uh, a week progresses. But we are facing problematic data uh, going into the end of the week. Um, oil still kind of down. So none of the calm dollar trades are really screaming turn buys or just straight up momentum buys for me. So that's why I'm a little bit cautious on that. Um, and I probably prefer maybe to, uh, uh, to wait a few days just to see how things shake out, whether they kind of confirm these signals before I would commit to a position one way or the other. Wish you guys the best luck, the best trading. Boris Hosberg, over now.